more joy, everything. It's inspired young people. Inspiration comes from within you. When you clear out the garbage that's in your mind, you then create space for something better, more beautiful to come in. Let's have life and have it more abundantly. I say yes. It's like taking a workshop. I get to be in my pajamas. We have a very active imagination, which is why it's important to learn how to harness it and then point it in the direction you want to go. I listen to your show every day. It's time now for Living Your Inspired Life with Susan Burrell. Susan is no-nonsense, inspirational, motivational, and fun. This is positive talk radio. Practical wisdom for everyday life. It's a gift you give yourself. Now, here's Susan. And welcome to Living Your Inspired Life. You're listening to News Talk 1590 KVTA. And if you're just checking into Living Your Inspired Life, I invite you to go to the website, livingyourinspiredlife.org, so you can tune in and tune up and develop your own personal power perspective. We're doing some really amazing dynamic work. I am so grateful for the opportunity to do this work, and I am so proud of the Living Your Inspired Life team and all that we've been doing. Uh, it's just it's just awesome, awesome. And so today I have two people in the studio with me. I'm going to talk about you guys like you're not here for a minute. Um, these guys came on my radar because they're part of a company that's new to Ventura County. And it's, it's a business that has as part of their paradigm, their, the culture of the business is about gratitude. And it's a practice of gratitude. And it's just part of what is the foundation, in my sense, of what the company and the business is all about. And so um, I want to welcome, hold on, I want to welcome John Halcyon Stin. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. And Nicole Garrett. Hello. Hello. And now these guys are part of a company that is called Fresh Realm, and there's a website, freshrealm.co, yes. C-O. So I want to talk a little bit with you guys first about the company, and then we'll get more into the culture and the, and, and the gratitude practice and the wisdom talks that occur here. Uh, I, I'm for, okay, I, just, I said it before we went on air, but I just want to say I'm grateful for the work that you guys are doing. And it's, it, you guys Thank did a you. lot of work preceding this company, but let's talk about Fresh Realm sure. first. Sure. So what is Fresh Realm, John? It is a disruptive new way to look at food distribution. <laughs> and so it is, um, it, it is a way of trying to connect the pieces of our food system in a more efficient way. And we kind of think of it as, as being three things. Uh -huh. It is a, a, a physical vessel that we use to ship food with. It is a technology, a cloud-based technology that connects all these pieces like uh, uh, of, of the system, the people who make the food, the people who pack the food, the people who distribute the, or ship the food, and then the people who sell the food, and then connecting all those people to a, a, a buyer. And then the last thing is this experience of actually getting food in a new way. And so like, I guess the... It's, it's kind of like a Netflix of food. So it bypasses retail. In the same way that Netflix kind of made it so you don't have to go in anywhere to get your movies. Right. It just shipped it directly to your house and then you ship it back. We ship a, directly from the person who makes the food, ship it directly to your house. You unload the food from this, this vessel, this uh, cooled, chilled vessel, and then you put it back on your porch and we pick it up the next day. So, I, I see. I love this concept because years ago I was part of um, an org organic uh, food distributing uh, place, but they brought it in big um, trucks, you know. And we all and we and there was a co-op, and we all had to wait on the out, you know, on the curb to get our food, and and it was really not helpful, especially if you're working. It's like, wait, right. I gotta, I have to make time for right. the truck. Right. That was a big part of the design of the vessels. It has to be able to be left on the porch in a hot day and still stay cool by the time that you get home by five, six, seven, eight, mm -hmm. nine, you know, midnight. It's got to be. So you can chilled. ship organic food. We can ship anything. So we're actually set up so that we don't sell directly to to customers. Mm -hmm. We work with all sorts of brands that want to, to sell foods. And it depends on their marketing, the kind of food that, that, that we sell. With it, We hook people up. We connect a food maker to a food merchant, and it's really market driven. So right now, the demand is is more for fresh food right. as opposed to processed. Right. And then you know we're trying to the, let the market push so that we, there's more and more and more demand for organic, which we're seeing everywhere. It's right. Just that, 
um, in the home delivery, uh, it's, you know, we, we will respond and let our merchants respond to the market. Well, I, so I want to read something I got off of um, your website. Uh, fresh Realm is improving fresh food distribu distribution and targeting food waste in order to help evolve humanity. Now, that I appreciate. Uh, okay, as a consumer, I can't even tell you. I go and I buy my bag of organic greens, right? And then a couple of days go by. I've been out busy. I forgot that I had already opened the bag of organic greens. I come back two days later, and the greens are completely right. spoiled because I didn't eat them immediately. So I get that whole thing in the larger scope of how much food is going to waste because right. it's not being taken care of properly. It's amazing. I, it's, it's kind of exciting how much more attention food waste is getting right now. Mm -hmm. And it's more and more coming into the news and there's more and more articles because honestly, I didn't realize uh, at the when I started this project what a significant problem food waste is. Um, not just, I thought it was just kind of like, um, you know, <sighs> that we're, you know, we would be judged by those that have so little and that it's kind of a pompous thing to, to, to waste your food. But it's a huge ecological problem because every everything that is farmed to make eatable food, has there's a consequence to the soil. And so if that then, you know, organic matter doesn't go back to the soil, right. it goes into a landfill, it creates methane, and it, it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a serious ecological problem. And so the way that our system is set up right now um, – we culturally have done a great job of getting a massive amount of food to people with through trucks and, and pumping the soil full of things and massive amounts of preservatives. So you can get a lot of calories all over the country right now, which is, that's a great step. But now we're at a point where we're like, okay, so now let's relook at this equation and think about all the things we've kind of done, maybe maybe pull back. Like I remember growing up thinking that a TV dinner was like the pinnacle, like sweet. Well, we've yeah. achieved so much as a, as, a, <laughs> as a nation, we can feed this. And I was like, wait, maybe we went a little too far, yeah. we can go back. Yeah. And, and food waste is one of those places where it's built into our current system. As, as, a, as food is pr produced and, and, and went, goes from a truck to a distribution center, to a distribution center, to retail, each step of the way, they, they're part of their equation is they, you're gonna have a certain amount of food waste. You're gonna have mm -hmm. a certain amount that you throw out. Mm -hmm. And at retail, they t throw out a ton, ton of, of food. A ton of food. And so part of our um, objective in trying to make a direct um, food maker to consumer uh, system is so that you only get shipped exactly what you are going to consume. Individuals, you know, like, uh, you know, well, I personally can eat a whole watermelon, but most people, maybe that's a lot. So you could just get, you know, the cut watermelon that you want. Oh, and then wow. also all of the, one of the things that I'm not so good at on my own is is composting all yes. of my rinds and things. I put it into a plastic bag and then I, and the goats, and I just feel so bad. And so by having the, fair, the food prepared before it gets to you, mm -hmm. all the rinds, all everything that it would be waste in your, mm -hmm. in your trash can is put into, uh, you know, uh, generally to, to animal feed. Right. So it's kind of like trying to, 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 to bring lean, uh, principles into the food making so that you can waste as little as possible. See, and that's the thing I that that caught my attention about you guys about fresh realm is is that you are shifting the perception or the perspective on how to manage food in a different way. There's a brand new uh, grocery store that opened up in where I live and um, and in order to make it look prosperous from the very beginning there was so much produce on the floor that after about a month or something i'm like this this there, there is more produce on the floor in this one store than could feed the entire valley i live in and i'm like what uh. is hap what happens when that food goes bad you know it's like d so i and then, yeah. and then I try not to think about it and then, and then I go unconscious and then, you know, I get to talk to you guys. <laughs> so the other thing that I, that caught my attention is the culture, the um, foundation that you guys stand on, which is about uh, collaboration and connection. So I want to read something else from the freshrealm.co website because I am so behind this. The next revolution of commerce and interaction is all about connectivity. Hello. Fresh Realm was formed to help usher in this new era. Welcome to the dot co, oh my gosh, era of cooperation, 
collaboration and co-creation. And I got to tell you, that is what we talk about all the time on Living Your Inspired Life is that we are all here to work together, to co venture in life so and nicole's shaking her head yes 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 so s- speak to me a little bit about that nicole about the collaboration and connectivity well um one of the things that i have paid a lot of attention to over the past however many years is the constant evolution that's happening in humanity uh, we don't give enough thought to the fact that evolution is continually happening. Oh, yeah. And we're participating in it. And if we don't recognize that, it's going to uh, happen without conscious intention. So it's interesting to look at humanity over the course of the last thousand, ten thousand years and see where humanity has come from. Mm-hmm. And then you can make some predictions about where it's going. So if you, if you think about where we were in the nomadic hunter and gatherer stage, that eventually that moved into an agricultural stage where people were able to settle down and stay in the same place. And then that leads to things like uh, resource protection and then uh, conquesting and controlling. And we've been in this... Um, era of competition yep. pretty intensely for, I'd say, about the last 5,000 years. Yep. And it's not really working. And we can feel it intuitively as human beings. Why? Because we're on the cusp of the next movement of human evolution. And that is naturally into connection and cooperation and collaboration. It makes a lot of sense. And the businesses that recognize that are going to be the ones that are driving human evolution. I I so agree with you. And as you were speaking, Nicole, I was hearing the word co-census, consensus, Mm. because it's about, uh, oh, I just got chills. It's about all of us sitting at the round table, hello, and coming into an awareness of what the other individuals at the table are also needing or envisioning. And then everybody syncing up to that larger vision uh, and coming to consensus that there is a way that each and every individual at the table can bring their piece of creating to play so that there is that connectivity that, you know, and and it's not about agreeing, you know, we're, here's what I, I know, which is tapping on what you just said, Nicole, we have moved, we have already done it over the last, I would say, five years in evolutionary process we've already moved from the us versus them or me against you to the we we have to work together we are here to co like you guys said in your thing co-create together and unless we really put our conscious intention on it like you were saying nicole we're we're it was not like anything bad is going to happen if we don't but Like you were saying, this is where we've been for the last 10,000 years, and and where has it gotten us? Mm -hmm. And and the possibilities are just exponentially more amazing when you have this kind of collaboration. And really, it's it's the Internet that has created the the, the massive abilities and the tools to to create that table that we can all sit together at. And I mean, you look at in, in almost every direction that the things that a collaboration is, is, is looking, it makes possible. I look at like, like the dance and, or, or certain types of arts and the, the things that are, the, the, these, these arts would kind of evolve on a, uh, glacial pace compared to now 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 troops are seeing what somebody else is doing and then adding suggestions and learning from them and learning from them and so it's exciting to see that businesses which for a long time felt like it was their responsibility to own everything yep and now they're starting to realize well well, we now have this tool to sit at the same table to actually figure out what we do best what you do best how can we learn from each other how can we together have this gestalt idea we do so much more when we can work together and, and maybe tone down the competition a little bit and beef up the cooperation. Well, and it's interesting too, John, because, and this is part of what Fresh Realm stands on, is gratitude. And in in my mind, gratitude means that I am going to give. 
I'm going to part of my when I my heart opens to gratitude, I am more open to giving of myself or giving of my ideas or or whatever. And Nicole, you're going, yeah, 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 again. Yeah. You want to speak to that? Well, there one of the awesome things about um, research that's been done over the last 20 years is there is uh, so much proof now from the academic world to show that these things like like gratitude have a significant impact on the quality of our lives mm-hmm. and, and healing within absolutely and um, and so and so you can proceed with the backing of this information that basically says we are going to feel more connected to each other we're going to feel we have um a more satisfying life if we give of ourselves that way if we say thank you that's one of the beautiful things about gratitude is it's so simple and it can have such a deeply profound effect on the quality of our lives yeah it's um it's interesting in in the gift that I am given by living your inspired life is I get to interact with people like you guys. And, and, and the theme that shows up, and maybe it's just because that's my theme, is this place of opening to gratitude so that uh, I can feel more at one, not only with myself, within myself, but at one with the environment and, and whomever I'm interacting with. And, and I know when I'm not in gratitude, everything in my life begins to shut down. Yeah. 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 Well, I, th- I think that one of the neat things about um, a practice of gratitude, and especially of expressing gratitude and being, you know, be- is what you, you end up tuning into the things outside yourself that enhance your life. And so it can be very tempting uh, to be, to, to fall into an I'm an island mentality and yeah. you feel separate and you feel alone and you feel that. In that place, it's easy to make decisions that are maybe not conducive to the whole planet and to the, the whole, you know, our, eco, you know, the ecosystem. But when you start to actually practice gratitude and, and start to feel like, oh, I am impacted positively by these things outside of myself, by these people outside of myself. And if you have the blessing of being realizing that someone is grateful for you, then it has that same effect. I mean, you start to just see like, I am a part of this massive system. And then you can start acting from a place of not just selfishly trying to, you know, add to what my needs, but instead realizing that any benefit you do to anyone actually increases the benefit of the whole. You know, as you're speaking, John, I'm reminded of this image called Indra's net. Are you guys familiar with in, it? No. I think she was a Hindu deity of some sort. And there is this net that she would cast over the universe. And at every point where the net met, connected, there was a jewel a bright colored jewel. And so we are all those jewels in this net that connect and we can shine and we know that we're connected to these other jewels, whatever they are. That's what I was hearing when you were talking. And that's it, absolutely. And I think that's one of the big, um, use the word gift, uh, and and that's a a huge part of, in fact, on the bottom of everyone, every vessel, it says uh, gratitude, gifting, connection. Um, because say that again gratitude gifting connection okay and what and and, and the what reason is because gifting we use is is a, a way to look at the way that um, you interact with people and you interact with the world in that the tasks that you do the talents that you have we try to th- think of everything is a potential to be a gift and the difference between a gift versus um, a trade or traditional commerce is that um, a gift is done without expectation and return and it allows me, if, I, if, if we have a transaction um, where I give you money and you give me some, something or we trade something, we both end up getting back equal to what we gave, and it's kind of a sum-zero process. Ha, huh, that's a great way mm-hmm. to speak of it. But if you gift, mm-hmm. I give to you, I cook you a meal, I don't expect anything back, then if you feel joy from it, that's a plus. And I get to feel joy, that's a plus. And suddenly this equation, the zero-sum game that we have in a transactional world, turns into this ability to just spirally get magnify and that everyone gets positive, positive, positive. And it's those jewels that you're talking about. Like, like each time that you get to see another jewel, because I'm not, I don't need anything back from it. When it shines, I get to have my light shine brighter because of that. Wow, that's, that's so profound, John. <laughs> Thank you. And yes, I agree and I get it. And, and uh, wow. 
I think I think your net analogy mm. really speaks to contemplating interconnectedness. Yes. And when you start to really notice how many people are involved in supporting your life, and this is one of the things that Fresh Rum does so well, your your openness to gratitude becomes exponential. The reality um, behind how many people are involved in doing anything for you like even one meal if you sit down and look at your meal and include the plate that your you know that your food is on or how many people grew whatever it was or tended to or cut or harvested or anything it's humongous mm -hmm. and if you open your heart and say thank you to each one of those people it just the um, vibration just ripples out and it touches many, 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 many people. I think interconnectedness is a really important thing to contemplate uh, deeply. It's very profound when it comes to not th not having this feeling of separateness, which I think causes a lot of problems in this world. Oh, yeah. And when you're out to eat at a restaurant, everybody's uh, huddled over their food to eat it as fast so they can get on with their life, that kind of thing. And to take that moment to just pause enough is right. so important. Yeah, and that, that you know, I, I uh, one of my great teachers was my my grandfather, and and he would take a moment of appreciation before every meal. As I mean, it's a very common practice, but it's just one of you you eat every day, and so it's this great time to recalibrate to gratitude to to kind of bring your your baseline of what's going great in your life back to oh my gosh, there's so many things that are going great, and so that's one of the things that you know, as, as Fresh Realm is getting fresh food to people and if people are getting fresh food and appreciating that and eating well that's awesome but if while we're doing that we can also kind of try to increase the gratitude increase the awareness of the 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 all the people and effort and care that went into bringing this to you then 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 it's kind of like that's little little cherry syrup chocolate on top <laughs> of it all you know I'm laughing because okay <laughs> now you guys I gotta tell <laughs> the truth about myself because I there are days where I'm so busy, I'm multitasking. So I'll make a really great fresh salad and, you know, and I'm going to sit down and I'll take my break and turn on the TV while I'm answering other emails and eating my food. I kid you not, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> Very cool. So I appreciate you saying, let's just slow down because it, it, it's true what you were saying, Nicole. If I can get to that place of, I, and I can feel my stomach going, I don't want to. I got to get other things done. But. If I can get to that place of just being for 20 minutes with my gratitude as I'm fueling my body with that gratitude, not only through the food, but through my mind. Right. It will reset, like you said. Yeah. And and, and, and there's I think there's, there's two parts to that resetting. One is a resetting of your own baseline of... Of appreciation, you know, it's 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 human nature and biological nature to slowly take for granted the things that are there all the time, and so you start to only notice the things that are wrong or that are missing, and so your your incredibly blessed life suddenly becomes one where all you're noticing is the traffic and the fact that you your your phone is one number less than the most current one or these crazy things instead of if you have to take a chance to to recalibrate and bring back to oh my gosh. I've got a comfortable bed. I've got access to clean water. In fact, this morning, in my very house, hot water shot out of the wall. It was drinkable, <laughs> and it shot, and it, and it was incredible. You know, but but if we don't recalibrate, you'll be in the middle of that miracle, and and while you're lathered up, going like, oh man, I gotta do. Oh, I, yep, I've been there, done that. <laughs> yes. And then the second part of it is that, so that the personal recalibration, and the, and the second of just tuning into the awareness of all the people and effort that went into this 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 food process is you know we, we have such a like a easy access to fast food and things and and you know th there are kids growing up that think that hamburger comes from you know McDonald's or, and they think that that they don't understand that the whole process of our food system and I think it's a, it's a, a a real detriment can I can I read what we have on yes. all of our packing slips yes so please. we, we kind of do an exercise in the office of like um, as we're doing the general things that we have to do, you know, is there a way that we can kind of put a little bit more emphasis on gratitude into those things? So on the on every packing slip that goes into a vessel that explains your meals, at the bottom it says, gratitude for the sun, water, and soil. Gratitude for the plants and animals. Gratitude for the brothers and sisters who farmed, prepared, packed, carried, and connected you to this nutritious bounty. May this food fuel your magnificent body and allow you to shine your brilliant light with the world. 
Oh my gosh, I got chills, John. So I'm I'm talking to John and Nicole. They're uh, they're all about this new company inventor called Fresh Realm. You can go to freshrealm.co. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. Hi, this is Susan Burrell from Living Your Inspired Life. I always find it easier and more fun to expand my life by being connected to open-hearted, like-minded people committed to being on the same path I am. If you feel the same way, I suggest you visit a Center for Spiritual Living. There are wonderful communities in Ventura, Ojai, Santa Barbara, Oxnard, Pleasant Valley, Camarillo, and Westlake Village. You'll find terrific people, great information, and more tools to help you live the life you were born to live. So go to CSL.org to find a center near you. That's CSL.org for a center near you. Welcome back to Living Your Inspired Life. I'm Susan Burrell, and I am having this wonderful, fun conversation with John and Nicole, and they're from a new company called Fresh Realm in Ventura County. And the thing that caught my attention, if you weren't listening at the beginning, is that this company has been founded on the idea and principle of gratitude, of giving, of being of service, of promoting wisdom, and and uh, and what I'm hearing is like an evolutionary co-creation process. So, John, you were saying that there's a practice that you guys do in the office. We very early on we started doing a a gratitude circle every Friday at 10 a.m. Um, it's part of our Goodness Friday, so we kind of think of. Goodness Fridays has a, a few parts to it. One is that um, kind of like a casual Friday, we encourage everyone to wear um, Goodwill or reused clothes. So mm. we get to encourage thrift store stuff and butterfly collars. And What a uh, great idea. Uh, and uh, and then we also encourage people to to be more generous and, and find opportunities to, um, if, if someone in front of you in line is a little bit low on cash, you know, instead of snickering, try to help them out. Um, and then the third part is the gratitude. And so we have a, a, every, every Friday at 10 o'clock, which is, open to the public. We invite anyone to come in. We invite all of our vendors and we invite all of all the people that we work with to, to come in. We have a gratitude circle where we share one thing professional that we're grateful for and one thing personal. And it's had a profound effect on the company. Because I can imagine. Because one of the things that, that sometimes happens in office cultures is when things are tough, you get into a kind of um, cover yourself attitude. And and it's very easy to start pointing fingers and start note, you know, like, oh, the the you know, marketing oversold this, you know, the tech people are dragging their feet. But when you have this once a week set time when you are going to be calling out and saying somebody did something good, I appreciate what this person did, you start to change the way that you look at your coworkers and what you notice. And I think there's this bio, I mean, a gratitude journal is the best thing you can do to turn your life around because you're biologically have an instinct to notice all the things that's bad. Nobody ever stayed alive longer and evolved because they were noticing the flowers. They paid attention to the the bears and the poison plants. And so we have to train ourselves to notice all the good stuff. And so when we do that in the office, we have this just constant awareness of that person helped me out. I'm going to remember that. That person did a great job. I'm going to remember that. And so that has this. And then and so when you get sitting around the, the the table and you get to hear all of the people that you're working with calling out wonderful things that people did that you didn't see, it just creates this real appreciation and this pride for the whole team. But the part that has been the most uh, transformative or put most like uh, unexpectedly amazing has been the personal sharing. Mm -hmm. Because as the company grows, it's harder to spend time with every single person. But we have this one hour where you get this jolt of what is the most important thing to everybody in the office? What their heart is most connected to, their, their spouse, their kids, their hobbies. And it, tears are very common. You know, yeah. and, and so and, and to, I got to give credit to, to Michael Lippold, our, our CEO, and all, all the, the, the founders of the company because they role model this real vulnerability and this real honesty and, and genuineness. And, they, and, and when everyone is doing that and sharing their hearts, you feel this profound appreciation. I leave every time going like, "Wow, people are awesome. These people are awesome." <laughs> like, I don't I'm not married, I don't have kids, but I leave understanding the joy that is in these people's lives because of these things. And through that, I have this, you know, 
Plato said, you know, an army of lovers cannot be defeated. And I finally kind of get, oh, right, we're not lovers, but I love these people. <laughs> and it's the gratitude circle that makes it so easy to do so. Oh, yeah. And Cracks so the, your heart open. Yeah. And so then, then when, you're, when you're sitting there and, you know, you, somebody's kind of struggling with a task, it's, it's not just a, a guy whose job it is to do spreadsheets. It's a guy that I really care about. And if I can help him so he can get home to his wife that I know is waiting for him, then I want to help. It just totally changes the office dynamic and, and the, the connection to the whole project. That's amazing. And it only takes one hour a week for all of you guys to connect in. Yeah. It's, that's, it, you know, in the realm of business, that's like nothing. That's a drop in the bucket. At the same time, I, I get why that's a tough thing to justify. I mean, it is one hour times everybody. It is a, a labor cost. And there's a lot of, of companies that, and, and I think, um, managers that would have a hard time justifying it and and initially when we started it was like okay this is a big gamble but it has been profound and and, and the, the the productivity that we get in return far outweighs it and so i mean if there's companies that are thinking about this or even want to you know reach out um, we would be happy to share or even come in and talk about how we do it because it, it's uh it's something that we are happy to share and gift to other companies as well i love that and there's some other things that you guys do uh it, through the company, there was you. So you were mentioning on break yeah. that there's a walk to the pier. Yes. There's we we we're, we try to you know um, the, the gratitude has been so uh, beneficial that we try to do more and more things. So um, and all of these things are optional and all of these things are open to the community because we want to see ourselves um, as a company that has problems that we solve in a business sense, but we're also a a micro community of individuals and human beings, and we are connected to our community in Ventura and. The more that we can feel that connection, it's, it's wonderful. As people attend, we do um, uh, a daily kind of mindfulness, fifteen minutes of quiet time in the office. Where if you're working and too busy, you just work quietly at your desk. Or if you want to join us in a center room, we have just a a, a quiet mindfulness meditation. Um, we also do a, every Wednesday a walk to the pier. We're lucky enough to be in downtown Ventura, so it's a very short walk, and it's just a beautiful way to to be reminded of of how lucky we are to live in this part of the world. Well, and, and I got to say, how smart is that? Because it gets everybody out of the office again to, you know, how many people never leave their office for eight or nine or 10 hours and then they go outside and they're so depleted mentally and emotionally. So. Right. Yeah. I, 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 we, we started doing the walk because it was, it was, it, it is so easy just to, to feel like I need to be at my desk. I need to be productive. And, and then, you know, as, as you leave the office and see a seagull is flying, you're like, wait a minute, we, we're, we're right by an, a, something that people travel yes. thousands of miles to experience. And we could take a 20-minute break and actually smell the ocean and, and take it in. And so, yeah, it's, it's one, another one of those things where w thinking short, it's hard to justify the time. But big picture, it's such a benefit to the overall productivity. And, and that's on Wednesdays at what time? At noon. At noon. So people uh, that are listening, if you want to join Fresh Realm for a walk down to the pier Wednesdays at noon and uh, get reconnected to self. Yeah, we're at uh, 476 uh, East Main Street, right above the Anacapa Brewery and the Busy Bee. Oh, well, hey, go for a walk and then get a burger and a beer. Exactly. <laughs> Or something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there's, uh, there's, so Nicole, there's mm -hmm. other stuff that you guys are doing. And this is, uh, right. there's something that you are calling wisdom talks. Right. Wisdom talks. Uh, they happen every three weeks in our, um, what we call the chill space, which is this really beautiful meeting area um, that is centrally located in the office. Mm -hmm. And uh, they started about six months ago. Um, and the, there are talks that I give, and the topics are um, all about personal transformation and personal growth. Uh -huh. So uh, this is something that I had been um, developing on my own. So I think it's important to note that I'm actually not a Fresh Realm employee. That and also, uh, given full disclosure, I'm actually the girlfriend of the CEO. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you being straight up yeah. about that. <laughs> um, and maybe a little bit of background would be helpful. So when I met Mike, Fresh Realm was just an idea; it didn't even have a name. And and um, 
what he brought to one of the things that he brought to this relationship was years and years of business experience. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I brought to the relationship was years of um, personal study in these evolutionary practices. And what was interesting was the when I talked about these things, Mike um, saw parallels between his business philosophy and the wisdom that I was um, talking about. And um, as my involvement in the Fresh Room culture um, was sort of developing, one of the things that I wanted to do was start Wisdom Talk somewhere in Ventura. Mm-hmm. And then we expanded our office to include this, wis- this uh, chill space that I had just talked about. And it became clear that that would be a really awesome spot for me to actually give these wisdom talks. So Fresh Realm hosts them. Mm -hmm. And the topics, um, well, some of them have been, the first one that I did was called, uh, Who Am I? Well, that's a good question, isn't it? I know. (laughs) It's a really good one. And who am I now? (laughs) I know. And I just, I really jumped into the whole mystery of our human uh, existence um, these are talks, too, that are open to the public, um, but are, you know, obviously um, uh, populated mostly by Fresh Realm employees. Mm-hmm. So just to take a break from ordinary existence and to ask yourself a question like, who am I really? And, and what is this entity behind the thoughts? Um, takes people out of their ordinary lives and broadens their perspective on what they're participating in. Um, but I also pick topics that are really practical um, or have a practical application to everybody's lives. Um, Which is awesome and helpful. Very helpful. We did one on anger, cooling the fires of anger. You know, these are things that people are curious about but maybe don't have time to um, pursue Mm -hmm. and discover on their own. Um, Other ones have been... Uh, the hero's journey. I did one on Joseph Campbell's work on the hero's journey, and this is ancient wisdom that's applicable to everybody's life today. Mm-hmm. Um, I did one on the balance of masculine and feminine energy and, and progressive relationships. Oh, cool! Yeah, very cool. Then I did another one called Cat Consciousness, and that one was about perspective and how limited our perspective can be, and how we can broaden our perspective to have a deeper understanding of the nature of reality. Mm-hmm. So, and these happen every, about every three weeks on what day? On Tuesdays on from Tuesday. 7 to 8. 7 to 8. So really it's only a, an hour or a little bit of time. It doesn't take that much time and it's really a beautiful way to participate in the local community if you live in Ventura. Um, I love this about Fresh Realm that they are not this isolated entity that they intentionally are opening up their doors to the community they want to have an impact on uh, it's so important for a business to look up beyond the walls of their um, business and say where are we operating who are the people that we're living around and and bumping into in the coffee shop and let's care about them to be able to do that in our own community and be an example to other companies i think can have a massive uh, impact. You guys are like, uh, you know, I talk often about the leading edge of mm. co-creation. You guys are definitely on that edge that's modeling the new uh, the new paradigm that nobody knows. We've talked about this on Living Your Inspired Life, that there's no normal anymore. Greg Braden was on and he's like, there's mm. no normal. You know, so forget about thinking about returning to normal. There isn't any. Yeah. But and, and consequently, we don't know what right. the next expression is. And so we all get to be the pioneers of that. And you guys are doing that. And it's a real uh, luxury to be even looking for that. I mean, I think about my, my father, you know, his objective was to provide for his family. You know, and so I remember growing up and starting to question things as I went through college and, and, and pushing him on like, you know, what was he driven by and his purpose? And he was kind of looking at me like, huh? what are you talking about? Like, I made a good life for you. That's what I'm, that's, yeah. I don't ask these questions of, of personal satisfaction is not something that I'm looking for in life um, more than you know, like pride in, in my job. And, and, 
and it's so amazing now that as we evolve as a culture, you know, and as we evolve, uh, we, we actually are able to ask those questions, not just for personal satisfaction in, in our lives, but in our workplace and trying to, to, to find a way to bring in our values and bring in our sense of purpose to the, the work projects that we do in the world. And mm-hmm. that's, you know, when this, when this was first kind of talked about and I was brought in, that was what was so exciting was that, yes, I'm excited about um, the 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 fresh food and getting fresh food to the masses and I'm super excited about a company that will ask the questions and recognize that everyone involved in the equation the people in the office the merchants the vendors the customers everybody there is a human being that has needs beyond maybe what we have considered um, you know basic it's like we're evolving in Maslow's har- hierarchy and yes and, and I hear that and 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 the 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 business world can grow with it too. That's right. So, and you, as you're talking, I just want to speak a word of blessing out into the ethers for all the people that came before us that have provided this new platform so that we can move from that lowest level on the Maslow period, uh, uh, pyramid of survival into the love and esteem and connectivity areas, which is really where I think the the, the human evolution is heading. I, I think that's the whole, like you were saying yeah. earlier, the internet stuff. So, Nicole, there's a couple of wisdom talks coming up. Yes. That, do you want to speak about that or Absolutely. add anything? Sure. So the next one is on Tuesday, March 24th. Mm-hmm. And... The title of that one is Dark Night of the Soul. Ouch. Oh, yeah. So oh. we're going we're gonna to dive deeply and look at the upside of feeling mm. very, very down. What are the blessings of extreme difficulty uh, in our lives? So that one is on March 24th. Then we have one on April 14th. And that one is called Actual Transformers. So that is about the transformational process. What motivates it? what the elements are and how we can put those things into practice so that we can move into being a different person. Yeah. If that's what we want. So here's what I'm hearing as you're saying that is everybody who's listening, you need to go to the March 24th one because you got to address your dark side. Yeah. yeah. (sighs) And then you go to the April 14th one and see how you transform that. Yeah. They are actually very related. Yeah. In that, in that, Difficulty is a very strong motivation for trans for transformation. Well, yeah, for some people, I you know, I mean, I, okay, I'm raising my hand. Uh-huh. Sometimes I have to sit in difficulty until it's so painful I can't handle it, and then I go, all right, I'll all right, I'll change. Yeah. Well, I'll. that's part that's part of it is that tuning into what's going on inside of your body, like the clues are there constantly, mm. and if you're uncomfortable, mm. even from slight irritation, it can be from slight irritation to just massive depression. The clues are there, and that that uh, discomfort is there to motivate some kind of a change. So part of your practice is paying attention to that. And if and if you're not paying attention to it, it's just going to prolong the discomfort until you finally go, oh, I'm tired of this, right. and it's time for me to make some kind of a change. Or something within your body says, hello, here's a dis-ease, yes. and now you really got to yeah. address this because you weren't paying attention. Right. Right. We do not tune into our bodies. No. We are not paying attention to these clues, and they're around us every single day. Yeah, they're I, there. Do you suppose that's cultural? An Absolutely. American culture going... and not paying attention? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, well, I, I, mean, and I, I think that... You know that that especially you know the, the the benefit and the and the the magic of the internet is fantastic, but the 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 dark side of that is that we have access to constant stimulation, and so when you're constantly have something to take your attention, you're not tuning in, you're not paying attention. That we have this crisis of a lack of stillness, mm-hmm. and I think that one of the consequences is that people are not tuned into their own mechanisms to to let them know of. of when they need to make a change, when they need to be, when they're not eating right. I mean, there's so many people that are in a state of feeling unwell that aren't questioning their own diet and they aren't questioning what they're eating. I mean, that's, I mean, that, that's probably a longer conversation about yeah, the medical Yeah, you guys system. might have to come back you know, and we'll have but, a conversation. But, but I think part of that is tuning in to, to what, what needs to be fixed and, and, and that you're, you, there's more signs than we are listening to. Well, I think the sti- what you were just speaking about, about the stimulation of the internet, and again, that was part of my blessing, but... Uh, you know, so I have a, I have a smartphone and my smartphone now 
opens up every morning with headlines. I did not want these headlines on my smartphone. I I I do have you know, whatever uh, news modalities on my phone that I want to read, but I want to read it at my choice. And now they show up every morning or every three times a day. I'm like, I I don't want to know that part right now. Right now, I want to be focused on my moment, who I am right now and what I'm doing and not be distracted by the the death and chaos and everything that's, right. you know what I'm saying? It's Absolutely. Like, I think one of the main um lessons that the wisdom talks bring is that live your life intentionally don't allow your attention to be forcefully drawn in directions that you haven't chosen and decide what kind of a life that you want to have and figure out what those elements are the mindfulness practice that john leads every day at three at fresh realm is a reminder to quiet down to settle your energy if there are things that you want to do to change in your life that you need to have that downtime uh that that settling in but the intentional um living uh is a is a major part of the reason that the wisdom talks are happening at fresh realm and so when you're saying uh intentional i understand what that is but for our listeners mm -hmm. that that don't necessarily that that means what you were saying about getting in tune with what's going on in your body and stuff well uh partly um basically it means you don't need to be a victim to the circumstances of your life uh you don't need to it, and some people don't even know that that's an option uh, you don't need to be a victim to the constant chatter that's going on in your brain, the spinning, the um, the attention being drawn to the past, or I don't know how many conversations I've had in my mind that um, just fuel arguments, and it changes the way that my body feels, and that is a time of not being uh, present, not being mindful. There's so much that we miss when we're in our heads all the time, so having a little bit of information. Another, um, another uh, theme that comes up in all of the uh, wisdom teachings that I pay attention to is having a guide or having a teacher, finding someone or something that can clue you into what is important in life. Because these things are intuitive in us, but when somebody actually speaks to them, they really solidify. They manifest in your mind and in your body and in your life in a way that didn't before you heard about mm -hmm. it. So being able to bring um, this information to the community uh, is such a is such a gift for me. For one, I um, I appreciate being a part of this stream of wisdom um, that feels the urge to pass it on. Yeah. You know, the information that I present is not my own. This information has been around since the very beginning of time what's different is that it comes through me and i have the opportunity because of my association with fresh rum to bring it to the community in this particular form and i have enormous gratitude for people like you and anybody else that's in the community that is finding a way to pass on the wisdom that they have found to be profound uh, and meaningful in their lives to the people that are around them. Well, and I just got to say, truth with a capital T is truth, you know. Mm -hmm. And and my son, I have a joke now with a friend of mine. And my son, his culture, they you know they say true that. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> true that, man, That's because right. it's because truth is truth. And right. and when we uh, become consciously aware of what our internal truth is, we see it out in the world, mm -hmm. and we get that mirrored, which is something you had spoke about right. at the first half so nicole how do people get to the wisdom talks how, where's the information a website uh they can get the information from my website at peacenick.co you want to spell that out p-e-a-c-e-n-i-c dot c-o and uh john generally has the information in the newsletter the fresh realm newsletter is that correct yes how yes. do i sign okay. up for that john <laughs> Uh, it, at the there's a link on our Facebook page. We invite people to follow along, uh -huh. which is uh, facebook.com/freshrealm. We also post it on our Twitter and Instagram, which we're also freshrealm. Okay, awesome. So people know how to find all that info. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a few more minutes. 
what else needs to be spoken or uh, shared with everybody? Well, I wanted to touch again on the the intentional idea, and that you know that that the the opposite of being intentional about you know the media and things that you consume is that you passively receive it. And I think that's what happens when you just allow those messages to come in your smartphone or when you turn on the TV and watch what's happening. The, 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 the people and the entities and the organizations that are, that are giving you this information are not necessarily motivated by giving you truth with a capital T. They're often motivated by a capitalist or commercial reason. And because we're a consumer-based society, they're often, they have some motivation to make you feel like you need something. You're not enough. You know, you need to feel pain for who you are so that you need to seek out some product that will make you feel like you are enough. And so a vehicle like this show that we're doing right now is such a beautiful gift to try to combat that and give people a, a, a dish that they can sample that isn't the, the processed media food. I like to think of... Um, when I speak as being part of a belief buffet. There's these ideas and taste it, sample it. If it tastes good, keep eating, otherwise spit it out. I have no attachment to it. I'm not trying to sell anything. Yeah. But there's a million people that are that are preparing dishes. And so find the ones of capital T truth that are seasoned in a way that you like and then listen to that. And, and at Fresh Home, we actually, uh, I host a show called Goodness Gracious and you can go to goodnessgraciousshow.co. And we do a twice a month show about the kind of the values of our company um, with about gratitude and about um, connection, about truth with a capital T. Um, and if you like it, keep eating it. If not, find something else that does. But I think just being aware that um, the quality of your life and your ability to be happy is vastly determined by where you place your focus. And just knowing that you have a choice of where you place your focus um, can change the direction and the the appreciation of everything. You know, it's interesting because, it's, uh, and I really appreciate you saying that. Uh, two things I want to say: goodness gracious, what is it? Good- goodness gracious show dot co dot co. Here's what I'm going to say about that. If you like it, pass it on. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. You know, hello. We're going to share stuff. But the other thing, going back to the media, I've been noticing. Uh, you know, because I watch television, I get addicted. Oh boy, and. Uh, and I'm seeing the commercials now. And mm-hmm. there's major corporations that are implanting in their commercials. Saw it during the Super Bowl. I was like, oh, my God. That's, uh, where they're giving back to sure. some sort yeah. of community. Right. I, I'm I, Okay, so I'm not dissing anybody. But wow, really? Because really, 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 when it's a major major billion dollar corporation and look how good we are now because now we're giving back to some local right. mm-hmm. something and and subliminally I was talking to somebody and they're like well that's a good thing I said yeah but you know what they got the new culture they got the new culture which is all about giftivism and being of service and and that could be good yeah, I, I'm, I'm right. very conflicted you're, you're, on yeah. this yeah. All right. you know, so because I think that you're right you don't want to you don't have like greenwashing and have somebody uh, coat something bad with an appearance of something good. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, if the way that corporations change direction is by listening to what the market is asking for them. You look at the amount oh. of organic that's sold at Walmart and you look at yeah. the way that, 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 that McDonald's changes their menu. So if what they are hearing is that people want more compassion, they want more um, uh, charitable acts and they mm-hmm. want more you know, healthy things, then I think that that's a step in the right direction. And I would, I, 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 I think that of, of yeah. to be able to vote with my dollar towards a company that's at least listening, and maybe they go, wow, we got a, a huge boost in sales when we start, you know, talking about these positive things. What if we stretch that? What if we stretch that? What if we stretch that? You know, that? all right. So I'm grateful, John, for you <laughs> reminding <laughs> me and focusing my attention that it, however we get there, right? Yeah. If it, if it, if it, it moves in small increments like that. I think it really, I think it really speaks to the energy that is behind this particular movement. Mm. That it may be coming in the back door in these mm. large corporations, and I agree with John. I think that that is a good thing. There is a difference between backing into it because the marketing department sees that it's a good idea, or having it be part of the culture because you f- you see the benefit of being a forward-thinking business. I mean, I, I, I you know, I should be clear that you know, Fresh Realm needs to make money. Flesh Realm needs to, to be a profitable and successful company. And that, that is, nothing matters if we can't make those things work. And so ideally, 
we can, by integrating gratitude and connection and these things into the way we do it, and hopefully having the market respond to that and having people say, this is something that I care about as well, we can be a part of that market force of, of bringing these ideas more and more and more into, into the world. But at the end of the day, you know, we have to be a profitable company, and 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 it's a it's a collaborative thing. I mean, the, the, the I mean, capitalism can you can call it a lot of negative things, but it is a dialogue between um, people buying and people uh, providing things. And and I think it, you know, I'm gonna say glass is half full and overflowing that we can make it work. I am going to affirm that for you, John. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been talking to John and Nicole. The company is Fresh Realm. Nicole is doing, doing wisdom talks. One is on March 24th, Tuesday night, and the other one is April 14th. And uh, go to peacenick.co to find out more about that or freshrealm.co to find out more about that or goodness gracious show.co. Show yes. Did I tap them all, you guys? I think bing, bing, it, bing, yeah. bing, bing. All right. So I just am so grateful that you guys joined me here today. And so I'm just going to finish with, and so it is, namaste.